The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. On a certain Sabbath, Jesus went into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him closely to see if he would cure on the Sabbath, so that they might discover a reason to accuse him. But he realized their intentions and said to the man with the withered hand, Come, come up and stand before us. And he rose and went up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath rather than do evil, to save life rather than to destroy it? Looking around at them all, he said to them, he said to him, stretch out your hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored. But they became enraged and discussed together what they might do to Jesus. My dear friends, the good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the Holy Gospel blot out our sins. My dear friends, in our beautiful readings today, uh, we sort of have two schools of thought coming together. Two schools of thought. One being from this beautiful letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. This first part, he says, Brothers and sisters, I rejoice in my suffering for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ on behalf of his body, which is the church of which I am a minister. So St. Paul says he's in his suffering, he's filling up what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ. And uh, our whole school of theology comes out of this passage, which is called Redemptive Suffering. And it's very important and beautiful. We can uh, unite our suffering to Jesus on the cross for the salvation of the world. So that Jesus receives our suffering with him on the cross. And then that is used for the salvation of people in the world. So that no suffering we have to endure on earth is wasted. It's used for, uh, for the salvation of souls. On the other hand, in the gospel, we have Jesus healing There's a whole other school of thought out there in the church that talks about Jesus the healer, right? Even the four titles of Christ, Jesus the Savior, Jesus the Redeemer, he saves us, he redeems us or changes us, Jesus the healer, he heals us, Jesus the liberator, he liberates us from the powers of darkness. So there's one other school that says God wants to heal us, God wants to... Uh, come down and relieve our suffering. He wants to heal us. And it's true as well. I know we are, we are baptized in, 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 the, in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit, and we are given the mission to pray for healing, to lay hands on each other and call down for healing, to ask the Lord to heal, our, uh, heal people in the world. So how, how do these two work together, perhaps? Well, I think if you look at the Garden of Gethsemane, you can see how they come together. Here's Jesus. He's about to face horrendous suffering. He's going to really suffer a lot. And his human nature doesn't want to do that because nobody wants to suffer. His human nature doesn't want to suffer. So he says, Father, if it be your will, take this suffering from me. But your will be done. But your will be done, Father. And I think that's, that's what's right. We, we pray to God for healing. We pray to God for the miracles. We pray to God for the things that we need. And when they don't come, we then unite our suffering with Jesus on the cross for the salvation of souls. I think that's the way those two schools come together. But intertwined in here is another mystery, my dear friends, the mystery of Jesus suffering today. Jesus still suffering in the world in his mystical body. Jesus is not disconnected from his people like we are. You know, we get, we, how many shootings have we heard about? We get kind of immune to the idea of people suffering. But the Lord Jesus, he's united with a mystical body, and he is suffering with his people in this world 
and he's right with them in their suffering, and he's suffering as well. So there's the whole mystery of suffering in these readings today as well. Let me close with a poem that I hope tries to pull these together. The poem is by uh, Mary Cheney, and it's called Whenever There Is Silence Around Me. Whenever there is silence around me, I am startled by a cry. It came down from the cross. The first time that I heard it, I went out and searched, and I found a man in the throes of crucifixion. I said, for pity's sake, I'll set you free, and I tried to remove the nails from his feet. But he said, let them be, for I cannot be taken down to every man, woman, and child come together to take me down. And I said, then what can I do? I cannot bear your cry. And he said, go out to all the world and tell everyone that you meet there's a man on the cross.